OS X has a new name. It's called Mac OS. And this version is called Sierra. The headline feature is that you can talk to Siri on your Mac now, but there are a lot of little things that make your Mac way, way better at talking to your iPhone, your iPad, and even your Apple Watch. Now, we've learned a lot from phones over the past 10 years, and now Apple is applying a lot of that to the Mac. Let's start with Siri. You can launch it one of several ways. You can hit function space. Hey Siri, how's it going? You can also, if you don't want to do that, you can click this icon on the dock. Or if you don't want to do that, you've also got this icon up here. It's basically everywhere. It's a little confusing, but stick with it. And you can ask Siri, Siri things like, show me the weather in Utah. Here's the forecast for Salt Lake City, Utah between today and June 29th, 2016. So you get this little interactive widget here and you can like save it as an image or if you want you can even add it to your notification area. It's actually a lot more useful than Spotlight overall, which makes it even more frustrating that the two things just aren't combined. I type on my computer and I really wish I could just type at Siri too. So while Siri makes your computer feel a little bit more like your phone, there's a whole pile of other features that make your computer better friends with your phone. And the first and very best of them is called iCloud Desktop and Documents. Basically, it's what iCloud Drive always should have been. You've got some stuff on your desktop and it just automatically mirrors itself to an app on your phone. It's exactly like Dropbox, but you don't have to think about it because it's built right into the Mac and right into the iPhone. Well, until you do. Apple still charges 10 bucks a month for a terabyte of storage or three bucks a month for 200 gigs. And it's really easy to fill that storage up, especially if you're backing up everything out of your documents folder. So another thing that can fill up all that space is all the files that have been backed up with a new feature called Optimized Mac Storage. The way it works is it looks at when your hard drive is getting too full and takes all the photos and files that you haven't touched in a while, deletes them from your local computer, and backs them up to iCloud. You can still get them whenever you want to, but it means that you've got more space on your computer to do the work that you're doing right now. So there's a bunch of other continuity features to talk about too. If you have iOS 10 on your iPhone, you can cut and paste from your phone to the Mac and vice versa. If you have watchOS 3 on your Apple Watch, you can use it to unlock your Mac so you don't have to constantly type in your password. Beyond that continuity stuff, there are a bunch of other app updates. The biggest one is to Photos. So if we open up Photos here, you can see we've got albums for people and places. Apple can figure out those things on its own. It also has this memory section which shows you a bunch of stuff that it's put together based on you know, its algorithms to make little albums, sort of like Google Photos does. And in terms of editing photos, there are some new editing features. If you edit a live photo here, you it will maintain itself as a live photo. And you can, of course, name people here. So this is me. iTunes also got an update. It's still kind of a mess. There's like a sidebar if you want it and a drop down and so on. But Apple Music uh, has these nice new big fonts and uh, playlists, weekly playlists, which is great. So it's uh, a little bit better here, but overall, going into iTunes still feels kind of like a chore. Also, there's tabs. You know that there's tabs in Safari, but you can also get tabs in Pages. There's new tabs. You can also get tabs in Maps. There's a whole bunch of tabs. Basically, any app that wants to make a tab can make a tab now, because apparently tabs are how we work with desktops from now on. Now, I should remind you that this is just a developer preview, so a lot of things will change. There's a beta for the public coming in July, and then the whole thing is gonna get released to everybody in September. And I'm hoping that between now and then, we're going to see Siri get a lot more features, because I gotta tell you, she works great when she works, but there's a lot of questions that she just doesn't understand. You had one email message from James Temple. Open it. What app shall I open? You just didn't get there, did you, Siri? If you're an iPhone user, this is going to be a great update for you. And if you're not, Apple is making the case yet again that if you have a Mac, you really want to have an iPhone because the two things just work way better together. Siri's actually a lot more useful than Spotlight. Now, all those little app updates. All those little app updates. And if you're not, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you that, I, that the Donald Trump thing that's in my head now, why am I talking like Donald Trump? 